It is an indeed an honor and a, and a privilege that we can open up the word of God together mm -hmm. to walk through biblical texts, yeah. to seek to understand yes. while we seek to explain what those texts are saying, not just in the past, not just historically, but what, what's being said today. How do we take and appropriate and apply God's word then for the right now? Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, yes. I pray that you have your Bibles. Pray also that if you have anything to write with, if you don't have a lesson, know that we'll be glad to email that to you. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13, let me whisper a word of prayer and we will move into our study today. Thank you, Father, for the word of God that is an inerrant word, a word that is eternal because you are eternal. We pray even now that you would open the eyes of our minds to see the wonderful things that are in your law. Lord, if anyone who doesn't know Jesus and free pardon of their sin, we pray that they would run to the cross and ask, what must, what must I do to be saved? We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. We ended up in Luke chapter 11. Yes. But there is the continuation of this prayer matter that we have been used to when we have learned the model of prayer. Yes. And so we're going to bring closure to the last clause of this prayer yeah. that we are taught by Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. It, it seals it. It, yeah. it is the height, the zenith. It is the apex. Mm -hmm. It is the peak of the closure of this prayer. Yeah. Jesus says in chapter 6 and verse 13, we've already looked at it. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one. Mm -hmm. Here's what Matthew shares with us that Luke does not record. For thine is the kingdom and the power yeah. and the glory forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at that text again. The very last word, Amen or Amen. Yeah. It is not yeah small case it is a capital A it's amazing how the prayer ends with capital Amen yeah. and it's amazing how it begins with our Father the Amen here is not just a so be it statement mm -hmm. but it is relative to a person who is making the statement who punctuates the end mm -hmm. as though he was signing off. Jesus is the amen. amen. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the one who says it to be so, and when he says it to be so, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Let, let, let's look at the lesson. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These final words serve as a benediction, and what a benediction it is, because this benediction, that's exactly what it is, enables us to begin with the Lord, continue with the Lord, and end with the Lord. Historically, this benediction echoes the words of David and 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Let's turn there, if you will.
verse 11, if you will. You're there. First Chronicles. Chapter 29, verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Even that part of this prayer David utters. Look at the historical element who he's praying to. But then also look at who picks up in the New Testament to accent what David is praying. Mm -hmm. David prays it in this passage. Yes. Thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Mm -hmm. Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 yes. comes back and repeats almost verbatim mm -hmm. what David has prayed in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. Y'all yes. see it? Yes. Uh, and, and this is happening when Solomon, his son, is being commissioned to build the temple. And so they, both of these statements form a unique and a beautiful doxology, declaring the preeminence of God as seen in the greatness of his eternal kingdom, his power, and his glory. Yeah. And so when you look at this prayer, the audience to whom Matthew's gospel is written to, because Matthew's gospel is written to the Jewish audience, it is very clear and it is very understandable that the Jewish readers, in hearing Jesus say this, would reconnect back to David in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. It would have a moving and appropriate climax to a prayer. And so with that being said, Let's explore and examine this, this benediction because we're talking about God's preeminence. I, I love words, but I also love knowing what a word says, okay? Yeah. And so for us to be on the same ground, let's look at what's meant by yeah. God's preeminence. We, right. We've got a good idea in knowing who he is, yeah. uh, not in its complete, his totality, but we got some knowledge of him through personal experience and through reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about his preeminence, yes. I think it's important that we all be on level ground. And so the word preeminence means preeminence means superiority, especially in noble or excellent qualities. But when it's spoken about God, listen to this, it's expressing God's complete and absolute authority yeah. and power. Mm -hmm. It is not a shared power. It is not a compromised power. It is God's and God's alone. Yeah. God's authority and God's power. And so the Bible consistently portrays God as preeminent in every way. He is set apart and above all living things. Yeah. Let me have your attention real quick. Yeah. God is not in a leaf. God is not in a tree. God is not in a snowflake and he ain't in a raindrop. Uh, I don't see God in a tree. I don't see him in a rain dropping. There are a lot of times when people write songs, let me have your attention. They don't always write to be biblically correct. Sometimes people compose songs because it sounds good, stuff rhymes. Yes. Well, if we're going to be real serious students of scripture, we need to be very clear. God is above creation. Yes. God is not in it. His hand, his handprint might be on it, but he is not in it. Oh, uh, okay. If, if God is in a tree, well, he's in trouble when a chainsaw saw get on it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to get you to see is that's a thinking that is relative to what is known as pantheism. P-A-N-T-H-E-I-S-M. God in nature, nature in God. No, uh-uh. Now, God is above everything yes, he ever made. Yes, He's in control of everything. Yes. He never takes a back seat to anything or anybody. 
Are, are y'all with me on this? And, and so to have absolute power and authority means you don't answer to nobody but yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who going to give God orders? Yeah. He's even said, who, who can you compare me to? Yeah. I stand in a category all by myself. And this is what we are trying to get you to see here. And because God is set apart from any and everything, then watch the lesson. He is worthy of honor. He's yeah. worthy of glory. Mm -hmm. And he has eternal dominion yeah. because of who he is and what God possesses. Yeah. The principle of God's uh, preeminence recognizes that he has a kingdom. He has a rule and a realm where he is preeminent, where he is king. And where he is supreme. Yeah. Well, let's see how the Bible supports and substantiates these statements. Psalms 47 yeah. and verse number 8 is the first one. Psalms 47 and verse number 8. Listen to what it says. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Yeah. Who else you know can make those claims and do what God does? Yeah. Look, if you will, at Psalms 93 and verse 1 and 2. Yeah. Psalms 93, verse 1 and 2. You got it? The Lord reigneth. That means he's in absolute control. He is clothed with majesty. Yeah. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girded himself. The world also is established. That it cannot be moved. Yeah. Your, his throne is established of old. You are from everlasting. Um, where does everlasting come from? Where does it begin? Uh, it's in God. Yeah. Time is birthed out of eternity. Yeah. But, he, but eternity is not birthed out of time. God is in control. Mm -hmm. To have that much power, to have that much authority, yeah. because these scriptures explain that God's reign is everlasting and it's characterized by his majesty his strength and power, along with the fact that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Yes. Okay, let's look at some other texts. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 17, New Testament. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 17. Okay. Verse 24 and 25. Paul is giving this, what we call this, he's, he's apologetizing. He is defending his faith because there is this matter of this statue to an unknown God in verse number 23. Uh, let, well, let me read down. Let, let me, let me, let's let, walk into it in verse, uh, in verse, starting in verse number 21. Uh, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some, some new thing. And then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly, unknowingly worship him I declare unto you. Looking at verse 24 and 25. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Let, let's stop for a second. What are you hearing in Paul's defense of his theological stand about who God is and his knowledge of it. Well, what is he saying about God? Because he's saying something. Look at the verse. I'll let you cheat. 
What is he saying? God is supreme. He God is supreme. Nobody else like him. Yes. What else is he saying? Look at the comparison. You got a statue to make sure that you don't need no God left out to the unknown God. Yeah. Whoa. However, Paul refutes it, stands firm against it. And he says that I know of an eternal being who has proven himself in what he has revealed about himself and how he has chosen to reveal himself. Look, if you will, at 1 Timothy chapter 1. And verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Got it? 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Now unto the king eternal. Eternal means ain't going to never end. Yeah. Stop right there for a second. There is no earthly king that is being alluded to here. Because there's no earthly person who lives forever. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we know that the king he's talking about is God himself. Yeah. Look at what else he says. Immortal, never to end, mm -hmm. invisible. Can't put your hands on him. Yeah. The only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Yeah. Amen. Look, if you will, at that one chapter letter by that brother of Jesus, Jude. Jude yeah. Verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him yeah. that is able, yeah. more than able, to keep you from falling, stumbling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. But look at what he ends with this, this one chapter with. To the only wise God, our Savior, what do we ascribe to him? Honor, glory, majesty, dominion, and power. We ain't giving God anything. Let me make that clear. This is not a matter of we giving God majesty, we giving God dominion. God already owns it. It's a matter of we are respecting him. Yeah. We are reverencing him yeah. for having those qualities and characteristics that he and he alone. Now when you hear, well, there's one more. Next book, last one. The book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4 and verse 11. Last verse of that chapter. Listen to what John, who is the writer of the book of Revelation, says. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Let, let, let's, let's just stop right there and let's just talk. Do you know who you talk to when you pray. Let me have your attention. Don't read your lesson. We, we, we really, you know, it, it, it's kind of like you remember when uh, uh, you, 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 you made that foolish error, and I pray you didn't repeat it, when you called yourself, going to suck your teeth, turn your head, roll your eyes, and disrespect your, your mama or your daddy or a senior. And they let you know, and they stood firm, you are a child. Yes. Stay in your place, yes. and you are not going to disrespect me. Yeah. Do we really understand who it is that we talk to? I, I tell you what, if you didn't have any clue of who it is that you pray to, there's been enough right here saying yes, that should help us to make sure we don't make those statements of error. Yeah. 
and calling him a man, what an insult. Just like somebody calling you a thing. You would defend your honor. I'm not a thing. I'm a person. Yeah. He is not upstairs either. Yeah. Amen. No. Um, he is God who is in complete, absolute control. Who has all authority, complete dominion, complete control. He is majestic. He sits on a throne, not in a rocking chair. And throne represents power and authority. Kings represented power and authority by sitting on a throne. And whenever anyone wanted to come and have to be in the presence of the king, they had to first of all be invited. You just didn't walk up on the king. Talking about, hey, what's up, king? Oh, no, it didn't work that way. You could literally lose your life. Mm -hmm. you, when you were summoned, mm -hmm. yeah. allowed, permitted yeah. to come before the king, yeah. you had to also make sure that you bowed to show humility and respect. Yeah. Amen. Before, you even, before you even opened your mouth, to ask for or say anything about why you showed up, you also kissed his ring and his scepter, mm -hmm. yeah. which were emblems of rule, power, and authority. Yes. Who did you talk to this morning mm -hmm. when, you, when you say you prayed? Yeah. Who did you talk to last night? When you say you prayed. Were we just going through the motions of just uttering words that we called a prayer? Or did we ever, did we even stop to think about I'm talking to he yeah. who has all authority. Who can send my situation or circumstance in whatever direction he wants to. Yeah. Amen. And you can get angry at him. If you want to, but you'll need him before he needs you. Yeah, yeah. We open this prayer with hallowed be your name. And we close it with for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Yeah. We start out respecting him. We end up respecting him. Yeah. We begin by respecting him. We don't end by questioning him. Yeah. As we have marched through this prayer, this prayer model, it has become very clear what Jesus is up to and teaching us not just what to repeat but what to build on when we come before him, not to flower up, not to butter him up, not, not, not to make him feel good, no, when you know who you're talking to. Yeah. It takes on a different persona altogether. Well, let's look at these statements. Yours is the kingdom. And this portion of the prayer model acknowledges that the Lord is in control and we must yield to his will. Because in a kingdom, there is a king. But also in a kingdom, you've got subjects or people who are under the rule of the king, who answer to the king, yeah. who are responsible for obeying the king. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Submitting to his rule. It didn't say you had to like him. It didn't say you had to agree with him. In, 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 in this, okay, let me have your attention. In every community, there are some signs that we know as speed signs. Mm -hmm. Try saying, no, forget that. Shoot. I know it says 35. I'm going to do 60. <laughs> Don't get caught. Amen. Yes, sir. The officer who will catch you yeah. 
it is commissioned by an authority mm -hmm. to carry out what it is that you transgressed. Mm -hmm. I said that to say this. We ought to be shouting right now. Amen. In light of all of God's word, we have intentionally disregarded, disrespected, and gone against and knew better. Yes. And we still here to talk about it. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, you ought to just tell him thank you in your own thank way. You, Been hard headed, hard hearted. I don't care. Uh, oh, you know what? There, there's some folks that, that you know they. I, I'm not sure what to call them or what to say about them. But but anybody who would have the audacity to say I don't care what the Bible say, you you might already be lost yeah. while you're talking. Yeah. See there, there there's a respect mm -hmm. for not just. God, but what God said, because you can't separate God's word from God. They are the words of God, which makes up the word of God because it comes from God. And so this is not optional. Uh-uh. No, we don't get to pick and choose a la carte what it is that we want. Yeah. Um, Took my wife to Olive Garden yesterday, and I wanted to order a dish, and I asked him about different types of pasta. I, I wanted penne, and all they had was certain noodles and some stuff. He said, no, nah, that's okay. Mm -mm. I, I, I pass. I, I don't get to pass here. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, I don't get to tell God if you are his child mm -hmm. what you're going to obey and what you choose to leave out. Yeah. Okay, y'all let me know when y'all ready. Yeah. We, we don't get to tell God I refuse to come to worship on the Lord's day when I'm more than healthy enough and I know I got some folks watching who can be in the house but choose to not show up but choose to be anywhere else they want. That's direct disobedience. The book of Hebrews says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, which is the manner of some. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. That, that's worship all day. And sometimes people want to argue, well, I ain't got to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I'll say this on the flip side of that. If Jesus is Lord of your life, you don't tell the Lord of your life what you aren't going to do. And this is what this text is helping us to see. If you are in the kingdom, yeah. if you are under the rule and the authority of God, yeah. then you are held accountable to do what God orders and expects you to do. Yeah. Here it is in case you're still missing it. We live in the United States of America. Yeah. We don't live in Czechoslovakia. We don't live in, uh, uh, in Albania. We, we don't live in some other places in the world. Yeah. So we don't get to tell the American government that we aren't, we aren't going to pay our taxes. We'll burn the flag if we feel like it. And we'll send the president a threatening message that we'll take him out. I wouldn't stop. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. There'll be some people knocking at your door, pulling you over, putting some silver bracelets on you, dressing you in an orange outfit. Yeah. Yeah. And there you go. If, thank you, Lord, if this country has some rules yeah. for citizens that live in it, don't. Y'all do live in America, right? Y'all do, do live in America, right? You do know that there are some expectations of citizens in the counties they live in and in the states they live in and surely in the nation they live in. What do you think is supposed to happen to those of us who are Christians under the rule and the reign of God? You think we just get to live however we want? No. You think we get to do, just do whatever we want? No. Absolutely not. We are under the command of a king yeah. who is not going to make allowances 
for certain behaviors just because. Yeah. And because we, we, we are in the kingdom of God, we're required to be obedient to the rule and the authority of, of the King Jesus Christ. Yeah. Stop and think about that. Let me say it one more time. Because we are in the kingdom of Christ, the rule of God, since he is Lord of our life, I'm trying to simplify this, we are required to be obedient yes. to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It ain't optional. Yeah. It's not, well, <laughs> I don't feel like it today. We don't get no days off here. <laughs> there ain't no days off on obeying the Lord, obeying the law of the Lord. Uh, we are under his rule and authority all the time. How are you doing with that? How does your life reflect the rule of Christ in your life? Y'all yeah. are for quiet today. Because if we are in opposition to it, then it says that we are disobedient. Yeah. Amen. Well, in the kingdom, there's a throne that the king sits on and it represents his power and authority. And when it comes to you, does Christ sit on the throne of your heart? Wow. Wow. Is that not a legitimate question? Sure it is. It, it, how are you doing with it? Yeah. Does he have absolute rule and authority over your life? Over your life choices? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Over your life decisions. Yeah, yeah. Over your life behaviors. Yeah. Over our conduct. Yeah, yeah. He said, sound like you know me. Yeah, you finally got it. Yeah, yeah. we are no longer ours. Oh, we belong to somebody. Okay, I don't know if y'all got the memo or not, but I'm going to give you another one in case you missed it. You and I are under new management. Yeah. And it's not you. Well, this is my life. I live it how I want to. Uh, not according to this. Uh-uh. No, you don't get to run your life anymore if Jesus Christ sits on the throne of it. Yeah. Amen. Lord, help me today. You, you, you don't get to tell the Lord how you're not going to live. You live however you want and then call it Christian. We were living in the day. Well, there are people who want to modify God's word. That means to change it, to dilute it, to take out, dissect whatever they don't like and fix it to however they want and still call that Bible. No, I call that heresy. Yeah. He has. If, okay. All right. Um, okay. Here it is. I, I think I'm going to get some help. Yeah. How many of you all in here, even those of you that are watching, though I can't see you, have at least one child that you brought in this world? You had one, you got you got at least one. Uh, all right. Um, how does it work when you got house rules of be in the house by nine o'clock and they come in at eleven, though they have a key? How long is that going to last? Not long. Excuse me? Not long. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, 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 your, that's your baby. <laughs> that's your child. <laughs> they got a key. You mean to tell me your child, who you love, who has a key, you ain't going to put up with that long? Huh? Come on, don't be afraid. No. Why not? You say it's yours. Ownership. Ownership. But more is your right. Right? Your right and ownership. That's your child. You get to tell your child who lives under your roof, who you feed, who you clothe. Okay, don't die on me now. You don't you gonna tell me that when it comes to the Lord? That some of those same rules don't apply? Yeah, they do. We don't get to tell God who we gonna love and who we ain't. We, we don't get to tell God uh, uh, we, we, we're not going to do some things. Well, I, I like this one, but 
Uh, I, I don't really like that one, Jesus. Can we, can we just kind of bend? Ain't no bending the rules here. Yours is the power. And the word for power here, I've given you the, the, the Greek uh, uh, language, uh, the, the spelling of it. It is that word dunamis. It, it, it actually is the word that we get the English derivative dynamite. Yeah. And anybody who knows anything about dynamite knows that the, the, the property that drives it is that it's explosive. And anything that's explosive, let me have your attention, doesn't leave what it exploded in the same way. Yours is the dunamis. Your power represents a possession of controlling influence over reality in a supernatural manner or way. Look at what it says about the greatness of God. That God's power is above anything we could ask or think. That we have no mental ability to imagine or to conceive what God's power can do according to his will. Let's stop for a second. Because many of us stand on that. Because we've seen it. Let me have your attention. Don't read the lesson. What do you think is the results of of answered prayer the revealed power of God okay yup 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 please make sure y'all drink some coffee before you come <laughs> answered prayer is nothing more than a response of the revealed power of God yeah. okay let me help you with that one I'm glad you pray and I'm glad you got other folk praying for you. But can I tell you something? The prayers don't get answered just because you or somebody else pray. There has to be someone with absolute, complete power yeah. to take our petitions, our requests, and bring those to pass by answering them. Okay, everybody in here live in a house, and if you live in a house, there are there are lines in it, power lines, um, power lines that lead to lights. Yeah. That when you walk in, you flip the switch, and guess what happens? Lights come on in y'all house. Yeah. For real? Why? Because the switch. Because you got power. You could because of the source. Yeah. You can have switches all day. But if there's no power in the line, That's right. ain't gonna be no light. That, um, excuse me. There will be no lights shining. You ever you ever watched it that whenever there is a power outage, no matter how brand new your light fixtures are, your bulbs. No matter how new your house or wherever you live is, no matter how who the electrician was, no matter how you know how much you paid for the apparatuses for the that that, that flip them on, turn them off. Have you ever noticed that in a power outage, it don't work? <laughs> that there's can I just say it like I feel it? Ain't nothing working, and you know why? Ain't no power. And there is the dependence of power to come to our house from another source. Yeah. And when that source has a breakdown or a failure, everybody yeah. in a certain realm or range or region is going to be affected by it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are you doing with the power of God in your life today. Are you having a power outage? Are you having a power shortage? Yeah. This has nothing to do with what church you go to and what your denomination is. What's your relationship like with the Lord? Yeah. How well are you and Jesus doing today? 
See, I'm talking to some people I'm looking at and some I can't who are living proof that it's not just prayer that works. Let me be clear. It's the power of God If prayer can work without God powering it, then what do you need God for? It's, it's almost like, Sister Mason, if you could drive your car without going to the gas station, what you showing up there for? You ain't going there to, you ain't at the pump to get snacks. Go to Giant Eagle and get them. You drive a vehicle that needs fuel in order to power what you drive to take you where you want to go. Yeah. We aren't praying just to pray just because we pray. We got needs, y'all. We got, st oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Needs, yeah. situations, circumstances yeah. that I cannot handle and control on my own. It's all right. Some of y'all, yeah. some of y'all don't tell the truth because everybody in here got something going on. Yeah. Even if you don't know it, it's still going on. And there's some stuff getting ready to happen you may not even be ready for. What makes the difference? The fact that you bowed your head and that you just prayed? No, no, no. It's the person. Yeah. Stories told about a man who's a great organist, went out on stage every night and played such beautiful music, wild the crowd. And after each, uh, each, each presentation, he'd get up, take his bow, and he'd talk about how great he was and all that he did. Um, but one day, he got to the organ, went to play it, there wasn't no music coming out. Room full of people wondering, well, what's going on? Go to the organ again, trying to play it. Ain't no music coming out. He thought he'd go and talk to the person who was supposed to be supplying the power. He said, what's going on? He says, I'm tired of you taking credit for what I keep doing for you. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Unless you understand, without me, there ain't gonna be no music presentations. Yeah. If I'm supplying the power, yeah. you ought to at least recognize yeah. that I'm the one helping you. Mm -hmm. Come here. Are you still talking about you? Are you still talking about your education? Are you still talking about your money? Are you still talking about where you are in life? Yeah. Did you not know you didn't get up out of that bed by yourself? You did not drink your coffee on your own strength? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. No matter what we have attained or amassed, it was no one but the Lord who helped us and made resources available for us. Yeah. 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 Not your power. It's his power. Yeah. And we can get to a point where God can say, okay, you smart, you lucky, you shrewd, and all of that. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just step aside mm -hmm. and let you have that. Mm -hmm. And let's see how well you do yeah. without me. Yes, because of him, we move, live, and have life. Yeah. Because of him. Yeah. All God has got to do is come, come and eat. God, God, God can, God can snatch the breath out of His body. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting that. I was, trying to, I was trying to see the back to with you. Oh, uh, how look at how much we take for granted. Yeah. yeah. Look at. How far we have assumed yes. that it's us. Mm -hmm. It ain't never.
never about us. It might be for us, but it ain't about us. Yeah. It don't come from us. It come from him. Yeah. And we, if we ain't careful, mm -hmm. we can lose focus. Yeah. And so we have no mental ability to imagine or conceive what God's power can do according to his will. His power is power unlimited and humanly undeterminable. Can't fathom it. Yeah. Can't figure it out. I ain't trying to. At this point in my life, I just tell him, thank you yeah. and keep it moving. Yeah. We must be very careful not, not in any way to limit the demonstrations of God's power to physical healing or the provisions of physical needs. I said that to simply say that God is bigger than a healing. Yeah. Let me have your attention. God is bigger than giving you some food in your house on your table. If that's all that we see God's power, when it comes to his power, we have really limited. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Thank you, Lord. If someone were to ask you, how large is your vocabulary? I hope it's larger than hi and goodbye. You could be there for a little while, couldn't you? Amen. Yeah. You can tell them about your ABCs. You can, you can talk about a whole lot of stuff. And somebody would probably walk away and think, wow, there's a whole lot more to you than what meets the eye and the ear. Mm -hmm. Same way it is with God. I want more from him yeah. than just healing my body when I'm sick. Mm -hmm. How about you? I want more from him than just feed me when I get hungry. Yeah. I, look, 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 Lord, look. Um, I, I need you to hold my hand. Yeah. Um, I need you to guide my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need you to control my temperament. Yeah. I, I need you to hold me close. Yeah. There, there, there is so much going on that could attack me and take me out. Lord, if, if I ain't got you, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And, and, and physical healing has its place, but under, let me say this, that you're going to get sick again. Yeah. Uh, you, you're going to eventually die. <laughs> Lazarus died, rose again when the Lord, when Jesus brought him back to life, but you ain't heard nobody talking about Lazarus leaving the building. <laughs> Lord, help me today. Let me also say this, and this is very important because there are people who listen to, to lies by and to them and believe them. And then when they don't work, then they are left very disappointed and many of them give up on God. Yeah. Here's where I'm going with this. We cannot manipulate his power to meet our wants or our needs. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you have faith. And I really need you to hear what I'm going to say. But there is no one who can take faith and tell God because I've got faith and you are required to. Yeah. Excuse me. No. All under your sovereign rule. All under your sovereign control. Yeah. I, I remember when when my father was dying, and my my father was a great man of faith. And I wrestled with how does a great man of faith who trusts God, who have seen God heal other people, now has to witness his own exit. Yeah. The Lord had to remind me he belonged to me. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. His faith is vital, but according to my will, yeah. mm -hmm. this is what the end result is going to be. Mm -hmm. That there are some people, and maybe somebody you know right now in your family, who's going through a health crisis, and they believe God can heal them. And he hasn't yet. Yeah. What do you do with God. In those moments. 
You may be praying for somebody in your own family who's going through a matter. Mm -hmm. Things haven't changed. How do you deal with God then? You know, he could do differently. But what if God is of a mind to say, my will be done. Yeah. And my will be done may not match up with what you want my will to be mm -hmm. in this situation. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to me then? Yeah. God, I'm in a health situation uh, that, that I didn't ask for, I didn't invite, I didn't want. I've tried to do all of the right things and, and now I've got these struggles. Yeah. How do you deal with God then? I want to tell you, he still has power. Yeah. Paul, come here. Paul says, I'm glad you invited me, Brother Odom. I'd come in the off, out, off, invite him a little bit more often. But for this moment, Paul, what can you tell us? He said, well, I had a problem. Yeah. I had a thorn, mm -hmm. a painful matter. Yeah. I prayed to God three times. And I asked him to remove it. Yeah. Watch this. Same God that kept him in a shipwreck. Mm -hmm. Same God mm -hmm. that when he was lighting the fire to warm himself, yeah. a viper came up out of it, bit him on the hand, and he shook it off in the fire, and he didn't die. Yeah. 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 Same, God Same God who kept him in a shipwreck Kept him when a snake could have taken him. A snake bite could have kept him out. And now Paul is at a place where he's got this nagging matter. Yeah. And he says, I pray to you. I, I, you know, yeah. one prayer was enough. Yeah. 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 I asked you three times to take it away. Mm -hmm. And when God answered Paul's prayer, he gave him an answer he may not have wanted, but an answer he needed. Yeah. Is, that what, is that what is going on with you right now? He, he's answered the prayer the way that he wanted it and the way he felt you needed it. You just didn't want it. Right. Mm -hmm. God says, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Paul said, I, I got a different look at some stuff now. I got a different look at and a different attitude about my infirmities and by my issues, because when I'm weak, then then, then I am strong. I, I'm saying this. I'm glad you have faith to believe God can do whatever God can do. But what do you do with God when he decides to have his will that comes counterculture to your faith? Do you still trust? Because there are some fellows out there telling folk, you can take your faith and do make God. You, you stop. Don't believe that lie. That's a lie. Your faith does not make God do anything. He'll honor it, but it still ought to be according to his will. Yeah. Yours is the glory. Glory in scripture originates and comes from his character and from all that he is, his power, his splendor, and his majesty. The glory of God which is revealed in all of his attributes and those are essential qualities that make God who he is. And as best as we can, humanly speaking, we try to understand it. But again, remember that God being who he is is like somebody trying to get to the bottom of him and you never will. Okay? Yeah. Uh, are you still with me? Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 28 and 29 helps us to see that God has a holiness that is on display that is so far above human understanding. To glorify God means to bring him honor through, the, through what we say, how we act, how we think. Because to glorify God means to acknowledge his glory and to value it above all things. Yeah. It means that we make it known to others and it means that we have a heartfelt gratitude. We glorify God through our faith, through our love, and through our desire to obey him. Yeah. I want to tell you, you can glorify God in some of the most difficult areas of your life. Not just when you're up here, but even if you're in Sorrow's Valley. Yeah. Even if you are going through some matters that don't make sense to you. God, I don't trust you. Yeah. 
No, I don't like what I feel. I don't like the hand that I've been dealt. I don't like what I've got to deal with. Yeah. But the one thing I know is that you're more than able to help me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, lastly, and I saw this and I thought it would be helpful when we look at this, this prayer from a panoramic, large view. Father, we pray this prayer in earnest of heart. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from sin's consequences affecting our intellects and our emotions. Deliver our wills from bondage, our judgments from perversion, our imaginations from lies or falsehood. Deliver our memories from bitter thought of the past. Deliver our instincts from sinful drifting. Deliver our affections from what is earthly. Deliver us from weakness that we may know the fullness of your strength. Thank you for this prayer. Your name may be hallowed. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Please continue to give us as apps, as abundantly as you have in the past our daily bread. Help us to forgive others that we may know the fullness of your paternal forgiveness. And thank you for the promise that you will never lead us into something that we cannot handle. But Lord, we cannot ha we can't handle any trial unless we submit to you and stand firm against the devil. Help us meet the conditions to know the fulfillment of the inestimable promises of this prayer and to pray as we ought to for your glory. For yours is the kingdom yeah. and the power and the glory forever. Yes, sir. Amen. May God be pleased mm -hmm. with this lesson. Yeah. I pray you will be helped. Mm -hmm. I pray that as we have taken these last six plus weeks to try to explore and explain this, this model, yeah. that your prayer life over these last six weeks mm -hmm. have taken a rise. Yeah. That you have learned over these last six weeks mm -hmm. that your prayer to God should be well beyond <clears throat> same old praying yeah. that you've been praying all the time. Mm -hmm. That you've got a new and a healthy a powerful and a productive conversation with him yeah. to lay bare to be honest to be transparent to share your heart desire to work within what we have walked through. My prayer today for you is that you take to heart yeah. these lessons of development ongoing. Therefore, your benefit mm -hmm. to your growth for his glory. I pray that you will even share with someone that on our Facebook page, that we have all of these lessons available, waiting for someone that you know who would benefit from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you desire to have copies of these lessons, we'll be more than glad to make them available to you. 330-369-290 is our phone number. And just know today that you can inbox us. Talk to us. Yeah. Let me hear from you. Let me hear how God's word explained and explored has been a blessing in your life. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you for your word. Yeah. Thank you for you. We pray that you will help those who are just now understanding what this prayer model is all about. We thank you for it. And we thank you that we can enlarge our prayer conversation with you in ways like never before. Save someone who doesn't know Jesus and the free pardon of their sin. We thank you in advance for we ask all of these and make all of these requests known unto you. 
by the authority of him who died, rose again, and is on his way back. Jesus Christ, we pray.